Hello, I'm Sarah Cordiner and Prosper and I have just had a fantastic chat all about making sure that you are exchanging your life for what makes you fully happy and joyful. If you want to check it out, click on the link above or below to watch us now. See ya! Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Sarah Cordina. Now, Sarah is an entrepreneur, an author, and a speaker. And she's been listed by Huffington Post as the top 50 must-follow entrepreneurs for the year 2017. Now, she's got 11 years experience in business, especially in the education industry, with over 9,000 students and over 100 and, um, in 131 uh, countries, and she's won multiple awards. Now, Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself there. Um, I was recently listed by the Huffington. Washington Post is one of the top 50 must follow female entrepreneurs for 2017. I'm a four times international number one best selling author, TV host, podcaster, and I run it all in my pajamas from the spare room in my house in a remote Australian town of Broome. <laughs> and I'm a mummy, which is my most important role. <laughs> Understandable. Well, okay, so let's just put it all into a nutshell you are a mom that is actually living the dream you left um you know uk and now you're living in australia um impacting lives while you're doing what you love best right that's right yeah and there's no other way to do it <laughs> understandable all right so obviously let's start off with a lot of people are not uh happy or they cannot get themselves out of their comfort zone you're coming into australia did that change anything about your livelihood what you knew before and and how did you then come to become well known even Huffington Post is talking about you for people to follow you yeah what, my story actually began I started my entrepreneurial dreams when I was 19 years old so wise luckily untainted by any kind of life's challenges so I was just full of untainted motivation. Um, so business went really, really well. I managed to get some contracts with local government. And actually, my first employee was my university lecturer at the time, which was pretty epic for a 19-year-old. <laughs> um, but yeah, when basically uh, life, life changed, I fell in love and moved abroad and so on. And I actually found myself uh, rocking up in Western Australia um, in the early 2012. 2012. Uh, my husband was working away at sea. I didn't know at the time that you could sell a business <laughs> not even that long ago I didn't know that so I actually shut the doors on a very successful company back in Europe and I literally arrived in Australia with nothing but a suitcase I had nothing but hope and when I arrived it suddenly it dawned on me just as I walked out of the international arrivals call that I had nowhere to live <laughs> and I had no job and I had no idea what I was going to do to eat that night um, and it all suddenly became very very real and I believe now that that was probably the making of me because when you're in a situation where survival is the only option, all of a sudden, every kind of excuse, all of the fears that we might normally have to try and achieve a particular goal become completely and utterly irrelevant when you compare it to starvation, right? So um, for me, I was, I was almost forced into a place of having to succeed. I had no other option but to succeed. Otherwise, I was quite literally going to starve to death. And that is not being dramatic. That is the situation I put myself into. So I believe that when, when you're in a situation where you have no other option but to achieve whatever it is that you set out to do and to have the results that you're after, you'll be amazed at what you will actually do to make that happen. So within 18 months of that day, I, I became the most resourceful human being on planet Earth. You know, I looked at, right, well, what have I got? What can I do um, and what you know what can I do with that in the time that I have right now and within 18 months I built a seven-figure business and had 23 staff all right that that is something they write about in books did you have to read that or that actually happened in your life because <laughs> 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 understandable obviously coming in with a suitcase just full of hopes and dreams and now you've created your own real big dream that a lot of people would be envying um, all coming from a place of leaving your comfort zone. All right. So in That's all of amazing. this, what has been the biggest lesson that you've learned prior to, I mean, obviously leaving your business and then coming in and what sort of lesson is, 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 is one thing that have stuck with you that will continuously Ooh. keep you going? 
No, I've probably got a few of them and I, I can give you some actual strategies for anyone listening to this right now. But I think the first thing I really want to start with this, this mental capacity of um, look, heroes are only made on the front line. Look at any action movie, look at any comic book, look at any superhero. And in order for them to be a hero, they actually have to cross into the battlefield. They have to go into war against some kind of enemy. They have to face some kind of fear. They have to face some kind of danger. They have to face risk. Without that scenario, they, they simply wouldn't be able to become a hero because they'd just be a normal person living a normal life. So I believe that in order for anything truly magnificent to happen, in order for us to become a truly wonderful version of ourselves, we have to push ourselves over that scary line into what might feel like a battlefield, into what might feel like something that could kill us and destroy our dreams. You know, it could take everything away from us. But we have to move into that comfort zone in order for it to be a possibility. If we stay behind it, we have a 100% opportunity of getting nowhere. If we cross that line, we have a 100% chance of a 50% possibility of getting that like heroine ship or becoming that hero or, or the best version of ourselves so we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable we have to be prepared to take that risk if we want something worth having so that's probably where I'd begin um, and the second thing is the, the, the whole thing that really initiated our conversation today Prosper was a post that I put up today and that post was what are you doing right now what are you doing right now and is this worth exchanging your life for I want you to look at the last one minute of your life and ask yourself, was that worth exchanging your life for? And I ask myself this all the time because I think a lot of the people probably listening to this because of yours, yours and mine, my connections, Prosper, are probably self-employed uh, business owners of some kind or in the entrepreneurial world, I, I'd expect, or thinking of, of moving into that. Um, and what we often do is we kind of focus on our tasks and our to-do list. Like we have this goal list, the stuff we want to achieve, the income we want to earn, the amount of freedom we want to have. We kind of got this picture as we're in business. But what I think happens is we become so obsessed with our to-do list that we completely forget what we're actually doing all of this for. And very quickly we fall into a place of being yet in another grind, in another, in another trap, in another hamster wheel, wondering what, what on earth we're doing with our lives every single day. Um, and one of the things I really want to bring home to people is to ask yourself, not what tasks do I want to be doing, but what life do I want to be living? Because right now is our life. Um, I, I have these, my, me myself, I've been trapped in this place of constantly thinking about the future. Like, if I hustle now, then one day I will get. If I spend lots of work doing this now, then one day I can spend time on the beach. You know, it was only a few weeks ago I sort of lifted my head up from a task. I was thinking, if I finish this, then one day. And I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, I'm young now. I'm healthy right now. I have a baby that wants me right now. I live by the beach right now. Why aren't I living the life I want to have right now? Why don't I just turn this computer off and step outside and do this right now? I don't know why I'm waiting for 10, 15, 20 years down the line. So <laughs> what are you exchanging your life for right now? Because everything you're doing at this particular moment, you are literally exchanging your life for. So write down what do you want to exchange your life for? And the first thing I get business owners to think about before we kind of go into the bigger picture is let's focus on the income first of all. Let, let's because that's what we're familiar with. Um, so write down exactly what amount of money you want to have in your pocket in the next 12 months. So literally, I want the exact figure because a lot of people go, I want to have more money. That's why I'm doing this. Like, how much is more money? Specifically, write that down. And then the next thing you want to do is divide that by, and I believe it's 2,048, which is the number of hours that the average person works per year. And that will give you your hourly rate. So the reason I do this is because I then look at every single task I'm doing every single day and then ask myself, is that worth this rate, this rate per hour? Is, is what I'm doing right now worth this amount of money per hour? If it's not, can you either stop doing it? <laughs> can you delegate it? Can you outsource it? But you know, first thing is, do I even need to be doing this? That's what I would really say to people. Um, the next thing is, you know, is, is work out what your major missions are. Um, because not only should the task be worth what you're doing in terms of the fiscal or the financial return, but it needs to be worth that in its, um, in its life exchange, which is like what we're doing here. So first of all, I say to people, now you've kind of got that financial goal. <laughs> now we want to start making sure that the things that we're doing every single day, every single minute that, that we are uh, doing 
to achieve that financial goal are worth exchanging our life for. So what are the three major missions that you want to accomplish in that 12 months? The three major missions. So these are big goals, big things that you really care about achieving. Within each mission, you then need to have what are the three major projects that you need to do or accomplish in order for that mission to be achieved over the next 12 months. Then within each project, what are the three major tasks that you need to do in order to complete the project, which will then achieve the mission? So I then break those tasks down, one task per month. Um, so that you've got the whole next 12 months tasks planned out because what we do is when I go back to that tasks list We often as entrepreneurs and business owners get so fixated on our task list And we think if I achieve everything on this task list Then my goal my life will be achieved the things I want in life will happen But if <laughs> the thing is our tasks list never ends right it hopefully it would never end because if our task list ends Then yeah. we're not going anywhere. Clearly we've stopped yeah. or we're dead or something <laughs> God forbid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what happens if we focus on a task list because it never ends is we never get the sense of achievement or completion and we can feel like we're going, we're going on a hamster wheel and that's when our motivation starts depleting and our energy starts depleting and that's when we sort of stop working on our missions and we feel like what am I doing I'm never getting anywhere when actually we are so focus on the big life missions and what you actually want then the projects then the tasks and then eventually what you should be seeing is this whole stuff list of stuff to do that doesn't actually align to any of your missions you know if if you've got anything on your to-do list that doesn't directly align to a major mission, then stop doing it. Stop it. Just stop it. It's not helping you achieve anything that you're working towards, so quit it. And on that final check then, is to go back to that sheet. Now you've got your major missions, your major projects, your major tasks. Look at all of those things and then say, does this completely fill me with joy? Does this excite me? Does this make me happy? Does this make me like, Whoa! when I think about doing it because if it does great if it doesn't if there's any part of you that makes you feel like I've got to do this I have to do this oh I don't want to do this task I don't want to ring that person I don't want to do this thing today then stop it take it off your list you completely and utterly have all the power all the control and all the freedom to decide what is or isn't on that list to decide what you should be doing with your life and if you feel like you don't have a choice then you're exchanging your life for the wrong thing wow Okay, so I was doing a mental calculation uh, of the 2,048 hours that you mentioned, and it looks like I should be getting paid for this talk for about... <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic points right there. I'm, I'm actually really... I was actually taking notes as you were speaking because you mentioned, um, you know, a diverse amount of points because people got to leave, you got to learn and also contribute of, of all the things that you were putting together there. Now you've showed us the part about leaving and what the learning aspects. Now you, you've got to learn some things in order for you to go then and, and have the energy that you have, know the direction that you're talking about and stuff like that. How then do you have people or how do you then do you advise people to maybe learn how to maybe become at least half of what you are at the moment? Uh, look, I think I think the biggest thing is um, you have to start somewhere. Um, one of the things I want to say to people is epiphanies are lies. Epiphanies are complete rubbish. There's a lot of business owners I meet out there. You know, I teach people how to create courses for a living. So a lot of people say to me, or a lot of business owners say, well, I haven't started my business yet because I don't really know what my thing is. A lot of course creators say, I haven't started creating online courses yet because I don't know what my thing is. A lot of speakers and authors say, I haven't created a talk or written a book yet because I don't know what my thing is. And it's almost like they're sitting around twiddling their thumbs, waiting for this magical epiphany to just appear upon them while they're sat on the toilet or something. Uh, this magical moment is is never just going to ping upon you. It's Steve Jobs didn't just invent a Mac computer. Edison didn't just invent a light bulb. Thing, everything you do and every successful business you've seen, every successful person you, you could come across in your life got there over an evolutionary process. They took step one and when they got there, they figured out then where step two was. There are too many people out there that are trying to open door 20 with key number one. There are too many people compare their day one to somebody else's year 12. And this is where they think, you know, I must know what I'm doing. You have to take the first step 
step before you know what the second step is. You know, all of my professional speaking, all of my topics, everything I do came about because I went out and did the first talk and I figured out what I did like talking about, what I didn't like talking about, and I iterated it. You know, these people work out um, through feedback, through delivering the first talk or um, starting the first business service, what worked for them, what they enjoyed, what they didn't enjoy, and they iterate it again. Constant change and evolution is absolutely critical towards any kind of success. If you're not changing, if you feel like you've figured it all out and you feel like you don't have to keep iterating, then you're doing it wrong. You know, the, the world constantly changes. Our customers' wants and needs change. The way the information that people want constantly changes. The way we deliver that, who we are, everything around us changes. So you, you never have the perfect thing. In fact, it's always, everything is always evolving. So um, for, for me, it's do something. You, you have been training your entire life for who you are right now, for the knowledge you've got right now, for the skills you've got right now. Your whole entire life has been your training for that. And with 7.2 plus billion people on planet Earth, I can guarantee my last Rolo to anybody that there is someone out there on planet Earth that needs what you know, that needs to be taught the skills that you have and would be willing to pay you for for it to, to learn it faster than what you learned it yourself. There are people that are going through experiences that you have got to the other side of that would love to know how you did it and would pay you for services or products that would help them fast forward through that particular thing. But you can't do that unless you do something. So whether it's just start sharing your tips and your ideas through live streams, the, the actual practical act of articulating, communicating, experimenting, playing in that space will help you start to uncover layer by layer by layer who you are, what your thing is and who your audience are and none of that will come to fruition until you just start doing it you'll amaze yourself what will start appearing once you start walking through the jungle all right okay so that that was quite you know extensive how you 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 came about to 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 tell us all of those things and especially the part about you know, continuously doing, all right? Some people don't have the stick to wittiness. Some people don't have that consistency. I mean, I, um, I've seen it. Uh, you know, it, some people, like you say, you, they're opening door number 20 with key number one. They just want that, you know, at, at the end Not of now. the... <laughs> exactly. Now, my question really is, how, how do people maintain or how do they, how do you maintain your consistency is there something that you anchor yourself with or because some people might know where they want to be but they might not know the how the wherewithal to to put it all together and i think part of your status today mentioned something like i check in with this regularly and it helps me to make huge differences what sort of tools or tricks are you using to make sure that you're checking to make sure to see that you are um you know in play yeah, that's it. And I think um, one of the first things I'll say is that motivation comes in ebbs and flows. Don't ever feel like you have to be captain motivated all the time. I mean, how annoying would that person be? <laughs> we can't all be high and happy all of the time. We can't all be motivated all the time. And I'm certainly, I'm certainly not myself. You know, we, I'm, one of the things I do is I check in with my energy. And, um, you know, if I feel in the creative zone, I push everything else aside and I milk the moment of being creative and I'll write and I'll blog and I'll podcast and I'll come up with ideas, whatever it might be. If I'm feeling um, like I want to communicate with people, I'll phone a heap of people that I've had on my list to do talks or meetings or say it's like Skype calls like this with, and I'll be like, hey, let's do that chat, you know? So check in with your natural energy and go with that. If you don't feel like talking to anyone, you feel like sitting on your bum on the sofa, that's your body telling you what to do next. And that's totally okay. You will actually be stronger and more consistent if you listen to, to what your body's telling you is right for you right now. Trying to force anything is going to be like trying to swim upstream, and that's not going to be cool for anybody. Body. But also it, go, it comes back to that joy question. It's like always come back and say, is what I'm doing right now joyful? Because if something's not joyful, you're not going to want to do it. it right. you're, you're never going to want to keep doing that thing if it just makes you feel rubbish and you, you're, you're not enjoying it at all. So this is why I always ask myself that question. And the second I find something not joyful, I get rid of it. Now, um, this is something that I haven't actually publicly announced. This is actually something I'm quite happy to now start sharing this to some degree at the moment. Um, but I, I have a, I have a earth service in my business uh, sphere. I have a lot in my in a lot of streams of income, but I have one particular service that sort of for the last twelve months I found very frustrating. I started hearing myself saying things like, 
this is so annoying. I don't want to do this phone call. I don't want to check in on this project. I don't want to follow up on this task. And oh, do I have to do it? Oh my God. If you hear yourself saying anything like that, it's not joyful and your motivation for that is going to go down and down and down and down along with the quality of it, along with your customers' perceptions of you in that particular space and that's not good. So I have officially just cut off a huge, a huge sector of my company um, and it's, it's gonna be gone. So the official announcement will be coming out very, very soon. I'm just in the process of actually selling a large, a large section of my business. Um, very big decision to make. I've spent years working on that side of my business. It's a very big part of who I am or what I stand for um, but I've just gone I I'm not going to be able I'm not going to be successful in something that isn't making me happy anymore so checking in with your joy will maintain your motivation and the other thing I want to check in back on is is that sort of getting rid of it you know just stop it if it's not making you happy just stop it so on top of having a goals list and missions and what I want to have I find that actually more important than that for me has been creating, and excuse anyone who doesn't like bad language, but there's no other way to word this, but by creating a shit list. And for me, my shit list has been one of the most powerful things for me creating a life of happiness and a very successful company. Because the things that, uh, that made you unhappy, annoyed you, frustrated you, felt like a chore, um, in any way felt uncomfortable or boring to do, why are we doing it? Stop it. Get rid of the people that annoy you. Get rid of the stuff that's irritating you. If someone posts a status on Facebook that gets up your nerves, delete them. Like <laughs> anything that you're doing in your life that in, in any way vaguely or remotely irritates you or gets up your nose or doesn't make you joyful, just stop it. <laughs> Why are you doing it? That for me keeps me motivated because I only do things in my life that make me happy. And when you're in that zone, your motivation never, ever dies. Great stuff. So obviously what you're saying here is we're born with choice. We have all these choices that we can, you know, go ahead with, but some people choose not to uh, do things that bring them joy. Some people choose to do things that are not giving them, you know, the satisfaction that they had before. Well, obviously, I mean, it's, it's a Friday today. You're probably going to be out with your family, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing the stuff that actually makes you happy. What, what, what is your day going to look like after this show today? Uh, so my day today, well actually this morning my husband and I decided that we wanted to have some more plants in our back area so, <laughs> so uh, we went for a coffee after I did my morning meetings and went to the, came back via the uh, gardening centre, bought some beautiful plants for the outside. We're going to head off to the beach after this uh, this chat this afternoon. We like, uh, I've got my Fitbit, yes. so I do I 10,000 steps a day so uh, we'll be heading off down the beach and uh, after that we're having a barbecue in the backyard with our friends so uh, and for me it's a sober barbecue because I'm doing sober September this month um, one of the things that I wrote on my uh, shit list for uh, for last month was that I felt very lethargic I was very tired and uh, when I sort of filtered back to what was causing that it was probably because I had uh, one too many glasses of wine that I probably shouldn't have been having <laughs> and we all know that wine interferes with our sleep it makes us groggy it's a depressant it's just no good for us as much as I love it um, I knew that, that I've got to sort of focus on my health to keep my energy high and my happiness high um, to, to make sure that I'm being productive and you know the best version of myself and the happiest life I can live <laughs> understandable and it oozes out of you the happiness the motivation just the excitement about life really uh, you know comes out it's been a pleasure sarah for uh, you know you giving us your time today and it also goes to testify that you probably had a good time doing this because you wouldn't do what would make you happy right exactly no that's it when you find your passion when you find something you love and for me as an educator it's inspiring other people so if anyone is inspired by this then this was just the best time not to mention it's been lovely talking to you as well Pros. we've been friends on facebook for a while now and it's lovely to meet people sort of albeit digitally <laughs> that got to know <laughs> understandable online. now sarah maybe some person was probably watching they're very motivated right now they just were on the edge of their seat hearing about your mission from the uk you sleeping not knowing where you're going to sleep up until coming up with a seven-figure business and then you know huffington post saying you uh is it huffington saying you um you know amongst the top 50 people people should follow and now you've got a family and you just bought flowers. Somebody's looking at that in, and thinking to themselves, okay, I really want some of that. How can people get a hold of you? 
take well look I, I was letting you know how you can get hold of me but take this slow everyone um this my my you know my well my life right now wasn't built overnight and honestly i can tell you right now in 12 years of working very very hard very long hours days where i've i have overworked myself and made myself very very sick um it's 12 years down the line that i finally started to build a world where i don't have to work as hard anymore and i can go to the flower shop in my coffee break um but it's not it's not like that the whole way and you mentioned earlier before prosper those who succeed are the people who commit to the journey are the ones who see that vision see that goal that they want and and stop at nothing to continuously dedicate their, their lives to their mission that makes them happy and joyful. So if this doesn't come immediately, it doesn't mean that you're, you're doing it wrong. Um, the, there is no magical ingredient other than determination and commitment. Keep sharing what you know. Keep giving what you know. Keep posting. Keep being present. Make sure that everyone around you knows exactly how you can help them. So don't, want, don't just let people know what you do. Let them know how you help and exactly what you can do. Be present all of the time um, and eventually you'll start seeing results and for me in the public space that took about 18 months of consistently being out there and giving and giving and giving before things started coming back to me and people were going I've been following you for nearly two years and I was like gee you could have told me <laughs> you could have given me a like there were some times I nearly quit right <laughs> one little like could have been great um so look, it's yeah don't don't um, don't worry if it's if it's taking some time um but yeah if anyone wants to just follow along the journey be be around other entrepreneurs or business owners be around people who are doing what you're trying to do or already have what you want remember that they're on a different stage of the journey to you so please don't come pair but let's sort of listen to what they're doing um, I myself have a Facebook group I'd love you to come and join it's free to come along it's called entrepreneur to edupreneur you can go to sarahcordner.com I've got a, a free five-day challenge called create your online course plan challenge um, and and I've got a podcast called course creators podcast and lots of other things if you head to the website and the Facebook group that's probably the best way I'm always in there sharing tips and information but keep going whatever your dreams are don't worry about how crazy they are you don't need to know how you're going to do them you just need to be committed to getting there <laughs> and take every little step one at a time great stuff well obviously this this talk was actually incited by a post that you put up so this is proof positive that no matter what you're putting out there somebody's watching then maybe one day they're just gonna stand up and say okay i'm the one talk to me let's <laughs> let's set up something all right yeah <laughs> well Brilliant. i'm kind of <laughs> I can't thank you enough, Sarah, for taking your time and making this seamless and um, very easy for everybody and actually imparting your knowledge 12 years in the making. And, and I feel like we owe you something. If there's anything we can possibly do for you um, besides bringing people across to you, then yeah, sure, let us know. But thank you so much for your time today. Mm -hmm. And I really wish you a fantastic weekend. And um, hopefully um, now that people know that... Um, they can get a hold of you. Somebody will come up and say, okay, those 12 years, I'm here to pay you back. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Absolute pleasure, Prosper. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. See, I was still starstruck and, and I must just mint in my words. English is not my first language. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask for... Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. Wow, really? you're not doing bad. Sorry? Yeah, carry on. Sorry. I'm going uh, to ask for a little favor. I want you to, to introduce sure. the show. Can you hear me? Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. Oh.